Shelly came in and you read his paperwork and it said he's a child molester, you would have to kill him or you would get killed. That's how it works. There's no way around it. Prison is a living hell for child molesters. Once the word gets out that the new inmate was brought in on charges of pedophilia, this inmate gets maltreated by his peers, rejected, and more times than not, they get killed. Here are 10 child molesters who were instantly killed in prison. There is no mercy for sex offenders in prison. Some of the most brutal violence I saw was against sex offenders. Number 10, Christian Meyer. January 2nd, 2019, Christian Meyer was beaten to death by three inmates in his prison facility. The perpetrators of this act were Adam Wright, who was in prison for robbing several banks, Alex Castro and Jason Cachego, who held Meyer down as he was stabbed 28 times and thrown down a flight of stairs. Oh wait, what exactly was Meyer's crime? Born on November 2nd, 1976, Myers was a computer science graduate and an expert with the web. He was a father of two children, but at the same time he was one of the leaders of an online child exploitation ring that was active from 2012 to 2017. Meyer and his fellow pedophiles used different means to extort inappropriate media from underage girls online. They sometimes pretended to be cute teenage boys in a bid to gain the trust of these girls while other times they were blackmailed into continuously sending inappropriate media. Meyer and about nine other men successfully exploited 100 girls with inappropriate media until one of the girls partnered with the FBI to fish him out in 2017. The next year, Christian Meyer was charged with sexual exploitation of a minor and other crimes, leading to his 40-year sentence in prison and then ultimately to his death. Number 9. Theodore Dyer I killed him because he was a child molester. But you didn't fact kill him. Oh, sure. And you intended to kill him. Oh, sure. Yes. October 29th, 2014. A man named Theodore Dyer was murdered by his own cellmate, Stephen Sanderson, for molesting a nine-year-old girl. Dyer met this young girl in 2012, when the girl and her mother moved into an apartment next to his. At the time, Dyer didn't seem predatory in any form. In fact, the mother freely allowed her children to spend time in his apartment during the day. However, one day, this mother walked into Dyer's apartment and saw something worse than a nightmare. On a cold night in June 2013, this mother came home and her daughter was nowhere to be found. Then she went over to Dyer's apartment to look for her. For some reason, this mother decided not to knock, going straight through the front door and into Dyer's room. To her greatest surprise, she found her daughter getting molested by Dyer. She immediately grabbed her, took her home, and called the cops. Then in January 2014, Dyer was sentenced to 50 years on charges of first-degree criminal sexual conduct. However, just like I said at the beginning, he was found dead in his cell only nine months later. Sanderson strangled Dyer to death with a rope in the early hours of the morning before the guards could notice. Sanderson was in prison for killing his girlfriend in 1991, and since he was serving a life sentence, he felt it wouldn't change anything if he added one more criminal act to his book of crimes. Number 8. Richard Huckle With a name like the Dark Web, you can tell that's where the shady and very secretive things on the internet get shared. But a man named Richard Huckle took this to a whole new level. He had a fan page on the dark web where he shared mind-boggling photos and videos of himself molesting children. But as sick as that was, Richard's fan page had tens of thousands of views on each post. The number grew so high it alerted US and Australian authorities to look into the fan page themselves. And then from one account to the other, they uncovered the identities of these pedophiles before they finally decrypted the identity of the man who was running the entire sick show, Richard Huckle. After Huckle was identified, the US tracked down his every move, and when they found out he was moving to the UK to spend the Christmas holiday, they contacted officers at the National Crime Agency who arrested him at London's Gatwick Airport. He was then questioned on suspicion of serious offenses against children. Though his laptop and hard drive had more than enough evidence of his sexual exploitations with children, Huckle eventually confessed to the charges put against him. On June 6, 2016, 
Huckle was sentenced to life imprisonment on 22 counts of sexual misconduct with a minor and was expected to serve a minimum of 25 years before being eligible to apply for parole. However, three years into his sentence, on October 13, 2019, Huckle was found dead in his cell while his body seemed like it had undergone extreme torture. His killer, Paul Fitzgerald, was also in prison for sexual offenses. Fitzgerald tied Huckle's hands and feet, then he gagged, strangled, and even inserted a kitchen utensil into Huckle's before stabbing him to death. Number 7. David Oseas Ramirez August 2019, at a jail in Jacksonville, Florida, two inmates on the top floor had an argument that resulted in the death of one of them, Oseas Ramirez. This floor of the facility was reserved for the most dangerous of criminals, and Oseas, having committed a crime against humanity, was kept there. Oseas was charged and sentenced to life imprisonment in 2013 for sexually molesting an 11-year-old girl who confided in her mother about what he had done to her. But after his sentence, he was sent to this facility where he met his death at the hands of another prisoner, Paul Dixon. Dixon was a 43-year-old inmate who had been in this facility since he was 17 for a murder he committed. But sometime in August 2019, Ian Ramirez got into an argument before Dixon stuck Ramirez's head in a toilet bowl until he drowned. Now, Ramirez's story took a drastic turn when the prison wardens wanted to keep his murder a secret. It was initially filed that Ramirez had been discharged, but the reason for his release was not filed. Then another inmate who witnessed the murder refused to give a statement for maybe the fear of being tagged as snitch, another offense taken seriously in prisons. So why exactly was Ramirez's murder initially covered up? Number 6. Mitchell Harrison July 2012, Mitchell Harrison, an inmate at Durham's Franklin Prison in County Durham, UK, was disemboweled by two other inmates, Nathan Mann and Michael Parr. Harrison was always that dude with weird sexual jokes, and as he grew older, his weird sexual fantasies became violent. At just 13 years of age, Harrison brutally assaulted a seven-year-old girl, leading to his first run-in with the law. He was given a formal warning by authorities, but two years later, he was charged to court for threatening to rape a 15-year-old classmate. At this point, the signs of who Harrison would become were clear, but they became clearer than ever when he raped a 13-year-old girl at the age of 23. He met her on the street and lured her naively to his apartment on the pretense that he would give her money for alcohol. However, Harrison made her strip naked before raping her brutally, not once, but twice. This little girl was able to pick up a few pieces of her clothing and run out into the street. Harrison was then arrested, charged, and sent to prison where he met his end. According to the statement from Nathan and Michael, Harrison had been bragging to other inmates about the things he had done to different underage girls. So they cooked up a plan for him. They invited him into an empty cell where they tied him up, stabbed his eye, slit his throat and slit open his stomach until all his intestines fell out. They were both in for life, so murdering Harris didn't change anything. Number 5. David Kiever July 2019, David Kiever was killed by his cellmate, Jimmy Ray Carruthers. Jimmy Ray strangled David to death and then stomped on his throat to make sure the deed was done. But more than a decade before this, Kiever was charged with sexual exploitation of a minor. This event took place in 1994, and in 96 he was sent to prison. However, lucky for Kiever, he was released in 2009. But unlucky for him, he failed to register as a sex offender, and so was rearrested in 2010, and sentenced to another eight years in prison. That's where he met Jimmy Ray, who eventually ended up taking his life. When Kiever was found dead in his cell, Jimmy Ray showed zero remorse and even stood by the door while the prison wardens took him away. But the crazy twist to this story is that both Kiever and Jimmy were sex offenders. Jimmy had been remanded in prison since 1994 on charges of sexual battery on a minor and child abuse. So maybe Jimmy Ray saw Kiever and hated the sight of himself, or maybe he didn't realize that he was also as evil as Kiever. And had he not committed the crime, 
Jimmy was scheduled to be released in 2021, but killing Kiever earned him a one-way ticket to spending the rest of his life behind bars. Number 4. Liam Dean This one right here will send shivers down your spine. July 2017, Liam Dean murdered his two-year-old daughter Luna. I know that's mind-boggling, but the story is much more tragic than you think. Two days after her birth, Liam Dean put his baby through a series of assaults, breaking her skull and ribs in the process. He repeatedly punched her in the face and twisted her extremely fragile body to break her bones until she died. But of course, this was his child, and this was also one of those cases where anger issues get the better of people. He was supposed to look after the newborn baby while the mother was getting some rest from child labor. However, the excessive crying from the child apparently made him do what he did. And when he realized himself and the despicable thing he had done, he called the medics and lied that the child repeatedly hit her head on a surface. The doctors battled to save her for three good days before she died. Investigations began and Dean finally confessed to the crime. Now, just thinking about it, what degree of punishment do you think he deserved for something so cruel? Well, even though it isn't our place to judge, Dean was sentenced to prison in 2017 and was eventually killed by his cellmate, John Westland. John thought he was a sex offender and killed Dean with an aftershave bottle. Surprisingly, John Westland was in prison for raping and assaulting a woman. Number 3. Robert Munger Robert was a 70-year-old inmate who was serving a 43-year sentence for multiple charges of child molestation and rape. Then there was another prisoner going by the name of Shane Goldsby. Goldsby was in prison for causing a police chase and ramming his car into a patrol vehicle. But this is where the story gets interesting. One of the numerous girls molested by Robert Munger just so happened to be Shade Goldsby's sister. These two men were then put in the same prison facility, the same pod, and the same cell. It was like Shane was in some sort of trap. With each passing day, he felt the urge to kill this man. He begged the prison wardens to change his cell multiple times, but they refused. And anytime he felt like harming this person, he hit the emergency button in his cell. But no one came to check up on him. So, one day, he decided to beat the old man to death hitting him 14 times in the face and stomping on his head five times. Robert Munger was found dead and Shane Goldsby was sentenced to 24 more years imprisonment for this. Number 2. Nicholas Anderson January 22, 2017 Nicholas Anderson was found dead in prison. His throat was slit with an improvised weapon and the perpetrator of the act was another inmate. Rocky Ali Beeman. Rocky was on a murdering spree, taking out sex offenders in prison, and everyone knew about it. Ali Beeman previously made a declaration that he hated sex offenders and would kill any one of them he came across until he was put on death row. This guy was so serious, he wrote a letter to a judge telling him how much he loved killing these sex offenders. For some reason, Ali Beeman wasn't killed and wasn't put on death row. So, he found another sex offender, Brian Hunsaker, who he stalked within the prison before strangling and stabbing him more than 80 times in the shower. Beeman truly had a passion for killing sex offenders. However, I'll leave it to you to imagine what you think happened to him next. Number 1. Jeffrey Epstein Jeffrey Epstein was an American sex offender and financier. He had an elite social circle where he and his associates gathered many women and children for sexual abuse. In 2005, police in Palm Beach, Florida began investigating Epstein after a parent reported that he had sexually abused her 14-year-old daughter. Epstein later pleaded guilty to this allegation and was sentenced to prison in 2008 on charges of procuring a child for prostitution and of soliciting a prostitute. However, being a man with many connections, Epstein was able to get a controversial plea deal after only serving 13 months. This was particularly shocking because the federal officials had identified about 36 girls, with some being as young as 14, that Epstein had abused. 
But on July 6, 2019, Epstein was rearrested on federal charges for sex trafficking of minors in Florida and New York. He was remanded in prison as he awaited trial and was also denied bail. However, on August 10th, 2019, he was found dead in his prison cell. The prison medical examiner ruled that his death was a suicide by hanging, but his lawyers and the general public don't buy that story. The reason is that Jeffrey threatened to expose some of the most influential men in the world and their involvement in sex trafficking. So maybe they had him killed. Maybe he killed himself out of fear of what other inmates might do to him. Or maybe, just maybe. You'll check out these other videos on your screen right now. But the truth remains that child molesters are as good as dead in any prison around the United States. For the most part, sex offenders, they just get off on victim victimizing people that um, can't fight back. 